This conference will now be recorded. Good afternoon, everyone. This is the National Weather Service here. We're going to do a brief update on the forecast of what you can expect over the next 36 hours and how you can prepare. For our bottom line up front, the most likely scenario, what we think is going to happen, we have a high risk of severe weather for tomorrow with a moderate risk of severe weather tonight. We are looking at two rounds of or windows for severe storms. The first one being tonight with around 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. with the potential for some uh, supercells with all hazards possible. And then the second round being tomorrow, starting mid-morning, continuing through the entire day into the late evening, again, with all hazards possible. We are also looking at a flooding threat with the axis of heaviest rainfall shifting into northwest Alabama. This could lead to river flooding, increases on rivers, creeks, and streams. We are really keeping an eye on Portland and Brownsboro for river flooding. We could also see flash flooding with this. So what should you do to prepare? So what we're doing ourselves today is thinking about what we can do tonight to get prepared for later tonight and to tomorrow. So some of those things include making sure we have more than one way to get a warning, including something that will wake you up in the middle of the night. Make sure your wireless emergency alerts are turned on, but make sure do not disturb on your cell phone is turned off because you want to make sure that you receive all the weather alerts that you can in the middle of the night. Make sure you have your emergency kit in place and then make sure you put it in your safe place, whether that's the closet, the storm shelter, your car, so you take it to a community storm shelter. Don't forget items for pets and kids. Bring a coloring book as well for the kids. Keep them occupied so they're not scared and anxious. Um, make sure you have uh, various items that you need, um, important documents and a baggie um, and uh, you know snacks as well as along with water and prepare for power outages. We will have gusty winds outside of thunderstorms. So just in general, it's gonna be breezy and it only takes one limb to fall on a power line in order to take out the power. And then, you know, we will have the storms on top of that with even greater wind force. So prepare for power outages, get those uh, flashlights ready uh, and make sure all of your electronic devices are charged um, in advance. And then of course, stay up to date with the latest forecast at our website. But when you go to bed tonight, bring by your bedside things that you will need if you need to run out of bed and get to your safe place quickly. The wallet, keys, dog leash. Make sure you have a sturdy pair of shoes. I'm not saying bring flip flops to your bedside. I want you to have tennis shoes, hiking shoes, something. So in case there is debris later, uh, you won't be stepping on glass. Uh, have that flashlight handy, a, a helmet to protect your head. And I'll put that just in a duffel bag, a backpack, a, a Rubbermaid bin, like whatever you have to have your go bag. And also check in with those neighbors and families and friends. Make sure everyone knows about the threat levels and hazards that we have in place, um, again, for tonight and throughout the day tomorrow. So we want to make sure that everyone is prepared, and the best way we can do that is together. This is a quick visual on the timeline for severe weather. So starting tonight is our first round. We have low confidence in this developing, and that's again for those a handful of strong to severe storms with all hazard possible. That's from about 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. During this whole time frame, the 36 hours, we have gusty non-thunderstorm winds. So outside of storms, winds can be gusting 35 to 40 miles per hour. Then we have our secondary severe threat tomorrow. We have higher confidence in this. And that is during starting during the mid-morning, lasting all the way through the evening into the overnight hours, with our highest severe threat being Saturday afternoon. Our highest severe threat is also going to co coincide with our highest flooding threat. As we get several rounds of storms, we will also be getting several rounds of heavy rainfall, leading to an increased likelihood of flash flooding rises on rivers, creeks, and streams into the afternoon and evening hours tomorrow. As a breakdown of the days, starting with tonight's severe weather threat, you'll see we have that moderate risk out in northwest, barely clipping Lauderdale County. Then it goes from moderate to enhanced slight in marginal. So you'll see the severe weather threat very quickly drops off as we go east of I-65. What this is trying to communicate is the highest risk tonight for those isolated severe storms will be in northwest Alabama, where we have 
uh, medium confidence in gusty winds, in severe hail, and in tornadoes. This is most likely from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. this morning, and we want to make sure people are prepared for this as it will be an overnight threat, meaning the warnings for any storms will be coming overnight while people are asleep. So again, everything that was mentioned earlier will be necessary to prepare for these overnight storms. And again, just repeating what we mentioned earlier, make sure all your devices are charged, you have a plan before you go to bed. Um, and then, you know, and when you do, do you, you know, know how long it takes you to get there to the community storm shelter or your safe place. Um, make sure everyone's on the same page at home and place that flashlight with fresh batteries by your bed. As a breakdown of our severe potential tonight, this also highlights that our highest risk is in Northwest Alabama. We have the risk for tornadoes, as you can see on the leftmost side, and the hatched, where you see those dashed uh, black lines, indicates the risk for significant tornadoes, wind, and or hail. So starting with tornadoes, we have that hatch risk, indicating a higher chance or of seeing an EF2 plus tornado. Moving to our wind threat, again, that is slightly offset. However, it is highest in Northwest Alabama, and our hail threat, seeing uh, greater than two inch hail. Again, that highest risk is in Northwest Alabama. So tonight specifically, Northwest Alabama is where we are cluing in for the highest risk. However, we could see some lower end severe threats throughout the entire area. As we go into the timing, this is our most likely timing for this severe event. So we have starting in Northwest Alabama, the area labeled one being 1 a.m. to 4 a.m as it moves east into north central Alabama and southern middle Tennessee, 2 a.m. to 5 a.m., and then as it continues on east into northeast Alabama from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. You'll see that we give ourselves a window about an hour on the front end and the back end of how early it could possibly start and how late it could end. So this timing is a little bit flexible, but that is our most likely time frame of when the, this can start. And this is for our first round. Now, Switching gears, we will be talking about the second round possible, and that's for tomorrow during the day. Tomorrow during the day, SBC has pulled the moderate risk, four out of five, further north across most of our forecast area, with the five out of five high risk now flipping Coleman County. While I did just mention the increase in categories, what is important here is that the storms do not stay within those categories. So the risk is for the entire area. The categories speak to somewhat of the confidence. So being in the four and five area, we do have very high confidence in seeing severe weather. And that's again, gust of 70 miles per hour, greater than one inch hail, and then significant tornadoes, potentially of EF2 plus. This is going to be a very long window when we are under the gun for severe weather. That's from 10 a.m. Saturday to 1 a.m. on Sunday. It's important to be prepared throughout this entire duration as you could potentially be under multiple warnings throughout the day between severe warnings, tornado warnings, and flash flood warnings. So make sure to have your plans in place to take shelter multiple times potentially throughout the day. And something else that we'd like to mention here, if you do have some impacts from an earlier storm, please know that the severe weather will be ongoing through the entire day. It is not safe to go out in the middle of the day, even if you do not have current storms, as more storms will be coming. Sunday will you be your best bet for having clear weather and non-threatening conditions to assess any storm damage. As for the time frame, again, these are supposed to move from west to east. Starting in northwest Alabama, we have from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Again, that's a very long window where you could see severe weather. Moving into north central Alabama and southern middle Tennessee, we have from 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. And then in northeast Alabama, 1 p.m. to 12 p.m. Or excuse me, 12 a.m. Again, this is, we give ourselves about an hour on the front end and the back end. This is the most likely timing. However, that's not to say that it couldn't start one hour earlier or one hour later. Going to the breakdown of threats. You'll notice, as I mentioned earlier, those hatched marks that you see indicate we are at higher risk for those intense hazards. So the 75 mile per hour winds, greater than two inch hail, and EF2 plus tornadoes. 
we are in the hatch risk for all three severe weather hazards, for tornadoes, for severe wind, and for severe hail. And that is throughout the entire day tomorrow. However, the most intense severe window will be from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. So again, while we could have storms going on all morning into the late evening, it is best to be prepared for every storm as the environment will be favorable throughout the entire day. Moving on to our flood potential, we have issued a flood watch for the entire area as we have the potential for about three to five inches of rain area-wide with locally higher amounts of about seven inches, potentially higher, possible. Because of this, again, we've issued that flood watch. It's from 7 a.m. Saturday through 1 a.m. Sunday. The highest flooding threat is going to be on Saturday afternoon coinciding with the highest severe threat. So there is a potential we could have severe thunderstorm warnings, tornado warnings, and flash flood warnings out all at the same time. That is something that we'd like you guys to prepare for now as it is increasingly possible that that comes up. In addition to all of the other threats, outside of rain and storms, we do have a non-thunderstorm wind threat. A wind advisory has been issued for the entire area. That's for that same time frame from 7 a.m. on Saturday through 1 a.m. on Sunday with widespread gusts of 30 to 40 miles per hour possible with locally higher gusts of 50 miles per hour possible, especially in northeast Alabama where we have that higher terrain. I mentioned that we have a severe and a flooding threat. So we put together a specific safety information to know where to go if a tornado and a flash flood warning overlap. When we do have that overlapping at the same time, it's best to find a shelter with an interior room with no windows on the lowest floor that's safely possible in case you are also affected by flood waters. So with quick access to move to higher ground if needed, um, no place outside is going to be safe. You want to avoid the exterior rooms as uh, you know the outside um, of the home you know gets affected first. And they, that, uh, the exterior rooms also have the windows. And so you want to make sure that you put as many walls in between you and the outside as possible. So again, now's the time to assess the situation with your family of where would be the safest place for me to be um, in case I need to be either a tornado warning or flash flood warning or both. But even with these gusty non-thunderstorm winds, um, we have a chance for power outages. Um, you know, any severe thunderstorm can create power outages. A limb from cloudy skies can also do the same thing. So we need to make sure that we're getting all of our items together in one spot, uh, like we talked about before of, you know, our water, food, first aid kit, our flashlights, um, any spare batteries that you may need, and um, you know all of your to-go items um, all in one spot just so when the power is out you are ready. To wrap everything up a quick summary of everything that we talked about here is the risk tonight and that's mainly for severe uh, storms with all hazards possible severe excuse me tornadoes hail and damaging winds in northeast Alabama excuse me in northwest Alabama that will be your highest threat. We have a low flooding threat tonight, and again, we do have those gusty winds of 30 to 35 miles per hour. Tomorrow morning, around mid-morning, is when our severe threat's gonna ramp up for the second time. We have potential for hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes again. Our flooding threat will start to increase throughout the day, and we still have that gusty wind threat of 35 to 40 miles per hour outside of storms. Saturday afternoon into the evening is when we're gonna see that highest severe threat and the flooding threat. This is when we have the best chance to see those high-end hazards, the greater than two inch hail, the 75 plus mile per hour damaging winds, and the potential for an EF2 plus tornado. This also coincides with our greatest flooding threat of about five to seven inches of rain possible with locally higher amounts. On top of that, again, we do have that gusty wind threat outside of any storms of 35 to 40 miles per hour. So this is about a whole 24 hours of severe weather where every single hour you could be have a risk for severe weather. So we're asking you guys to remain weather aware, to remain vigilant throughout the entire event. We understand that this is a very long event for everyone. We're asking you to be prepared to be weather aware for those 24 hours. 
And we will be active on social media before, during, and after the events. Uh, you can find us at, at NWS Huntsville on X and at uh, NWS Huntsville on Facebook as well. The warnings will auto post to X. Uh, that capability is not there for Facebook, but we will post all watch information, weather updates, and radar updates on both platforms. Here's where you can also ask us questions about um, any uh, anything that you may have uh, for this event. And then please send us your damage reports through our social media or email. Uh, that helps us uh, know what happened for the event. And then also helps us with storm damage surveys after the event of knowing where the damage was and where we need to go. And if you want more information, um, this could, all this can be found on our webpage as well. Um, and uh, just stay up to date. And we also um, encourage you to share our social media posts with family and friends so they too can have access to the most uh, updated weather information and safety graphics that you can share. So with this, uh, we will wrap it up. Thank you all for attending and please stay safe. Huntsville Weather Clearing.